Welcome to Electron Online and in this video we're going to show you the forces associated with the upward direction forces on an object that is sinking down into a fluid due to the force of gravity. So the weight of the, of the, the, weight of the object will pull the object down but there's three forces in the fluid that will push it up. One of them is the buoyancy force, the other one is the force associated with the viscosity of the liquid and the third one is associated with the drag uh, coefficient of the liquid of the object moving to the liquid and that's really the better way to say it. So we're going to calculate the three in the particular case where the object is fairly small, it's a metal sphere, the radius is one millimeter, the fluid is water 20 degrees centigrade which then we can find the associated uh, viscosity coefficient. Alright, so the buoyancy force would be equal to, it would be the density, it would be the, the, uh, f the weight of the displaced liquid which means the density of the liquid which would be a thousand I'm going to skip the units because I'm running out of room here. The volume would be 4 thirds times pi times the radius cube, the radius being 1 millimeter, that would be 0 0.001 cubed, and then g would be 9.8. So that would be the buoyancy force buoying up the object. So let's find out how big a number that is. With a 0 0.001 cubed, that would be pretty small. So this times a thousand, that would be 0 0.001 squared. 0 0.001 squared times four divided by three, and times pi, and then times 9.8 equals. And so you can see that would be a force of 4.1 times 10 to the minus five newtons. All right, that's a relatively small force. Let's compare that to the force caused by the viscosity of the liquid with the object of course moving through the liquid. So this would be equal to 6 times pi times mu which is 1.002 for water at 20 degrees centigrade. The radius would be 0 0.001 and the velocity would be 0 0.05. I don't know if I made a note of that. So the velocity was supposed to be 5 centimeters per second. All right. So, plugging that into your equation, let's see what we get. So, 6 times pi times 1.002 times 0 0.001 times 0 0.05 equals, and so that would be 9.4 times 10 to the minus 4. So, that would be 9.4 times 10 to the minus 4. And, of course, the unit that would be newtons. So this is the buoyancy force, this is the force caused by the viscosity liquid, and notice that this is a much bigger force than the buoyancy force. So for a very small object, it's not so much the buoyancy force that holds down the velocity of the object moving through the fluid, it's really the viscosity of the fluid that's holding down the movement. So that's why very small spheres will tend to move very, very slowly in a viscous liquid. Finally, the, the drag coefficient, what effect does it have? Well, plug it in the numbers, we get one half, times, since it's a sphere, the drag coefficient is 0 0.47, the density of the liquid is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, the cross-sectional area, since it's a sphere, that would be, the cross-section of a sphere is actually a circle, so it's pi r squared, it would be 0 0.001 squared, and the velocity is 0 0.05 quantity squared. All right, let's see what we get over here. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.47 times 1,000 times pi, times 0 0.001 squared and times 0 0.05 squared equals. And notice that this will give us a force due to the drag coefficient equal to 1.85 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons. So notice that with small objects like that, the force caused by the drag coefficient is so small compared to the other two forces that in essence we can pretty well ignore that. So for small objects, the drag coefficient is almost non-existent compared to the forces associated with the buoyancy force and the viscosity of the liquid. But for larger objects moving much faster, you can see that since the cross-sectional area would be much bigger, and since the velocity would then be much bigger, you'll see that the drag coefficient then becomes a big factor, a big player in how objects move through the fluid. And we'll see that in the next video where we're going to use a larger object moving much faster and see how the drag coefficient then changes with changing mass, changing uh, speed, and changing cross-sectional area. All right, so that's how we compared the three forces. And on the next video, we'll see how that will change when things, when the parameters are different.